welcome to Simsbury Happenings. I'm Eric Wellman, and today we are diving into the recommendations of the Charter Revision Commission, which this spring delivered a set of proposals to the Board of Selectmen. At the top of the list, a momentous recommendation that would give Simsbury a new type of government, one that's led by a town manager. Now, I wanted to go behind the scenes of this idea that Simsbury would be better served with a professional town manager at the helm, as opposed to an elected first selectman. My guests today, two members of the Charter Revision Commission, Anita Mielert, a yes vote on the new town structure, and Melissa Osborne, uh, one of four members to vote against it. Welcome to both of you. Thank, thank you. you. Nice so, for having us. Thank you. So we got some news uh, just this past Monday, June 27th. Mm -hmm. The uh, Board of Selectmen uh, handed uh, the recommendations back, basically looking for a little bit more information on this issue. Just sort of bring us up to the present. What are they asking for right now? I was not able to watch the meeting or be there. Um, so if Melissa was, we could defer I didn't to her. watch or or read it since that time, but I have spoken with people who were there and I was at there for the very end. And my understanding is that they want us to go back to the table uh, to consider mainly the option that we never did consider before, which is the idea of maintaining our current form of government with the addition of a codified position for an administrative, uh, chief administrative officer. Uh, because that is what led to the crux of the difficulties that got us into another Charter Revision Commission uh, because we have somebody at the helm of the administrative role uh, which is not actually in our charter. Mm -hmm. So there were several um, uh, iterations of this that were considered uh, by the Commission. Describe what was actually put in front of the selectmen as the recommendation. Uh, the recommendation was to go to a full town manager form of government and that the first selectman would still remain the legislative head and it would be still an elected position as first selectman and um, that the first selectman and the board of selectmen would hire the town manager and the town manager would be under something like a three-year contract which would be renewable he'd also have his or her uh, performance reviewed on an annual basis and um, any bonuses or salary adjustments would still be subject to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, but the town manager would be responsible for all contracts, for all um, you know, um, bids that are let out, for uh, a lot of financial uh, reporting responsibilities, etc. So I'm interested in, in why you voted yes on this, in particular because you, from 1999 to 2001, served as Simsbury's first select woman. Right. So you have a, a really, I think, nice perspective of how the town operates and, and opportunities there. So, so tell me about why you voted yes. Well, first, let me start with my bottom line. Yeah. The, the bottom line on this is in each instance, whether you have a first selectman or a town manager, it really comes down to the capabilities of the person that's in, in that position. Um, you can have an incapable town manager who might have all the right degrees and all that, and you might have a very, very capable first selectman, which we certainly have a history of in this town. Um, I guess the reason, well, I, I was on a, a previous uh, Charter Revision Commission, too, back in the early uh, 2000s, and at that point I was the only person on a team of five to go for a town manager. I was, I've been in favor of a town manager pretty much right along. Um, because of the education they receive, having a public administration degree uh, and years of experience and the competition that is involved on a, you know, professional qualification level. Uh, and I could see that there were times when I was not as effective as I could have been had I had a permanent situation. In other words, I was politically vulnerable for certain things in which I felt I should not have been politically vulnerable, such as directing staff. Mm. Um, if staff didn't like what I told them to do, uh, if they didn't want to do what I told them to do, well then, you know, maybe she's going to be out of yeah. here in the so, next election. <laughs> so you're saying that a, 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 an administrator would be at least one step removed from needing to think about the next election. True, weird. true. And um, when I was the first selectman, I really had three jobs. And it was really a lot to expect one person to do. And in fact, 
Since then, we have not expected one person to do all of that. Uh, I was the chief administrative officer, which is the town manager position, really. I was the chief elected official, which we are now going to imbue with the, still with the first selectman, and I was the personnel director. So I was in charge of hiring and firing and union contracts and uh, you know lots of other stuff that was very complicated and getting much more complicated every year. And um, now if we have, we would still have a first selectman, we would have a town manager, and we have a personnel person. So now if I were the first selectman, I would have to do one job and not three jobs. And it was, um, it's much more realistic, I think, at this point. Okay. Um, so, that was your question, and we'll yeah. let you let you I continue. I appreciate your perspective, and Melissa. Mm -hmm. I wanted to turn to you because you looked at the same set of evidence and came to a different conclusion. I did. Um, <clears throat> just to back up one, to add one piece to what uh, Anita had said about what we actually presented to to the board of selectmen, the report that we sent. In addition to having our first selectman remain as the chief elected officer, we've also recommended that the first selectman retain some small stipend type of payment. So it would be a paid position yep. in addition to the town manager being a paid position. Um, and I believe we came up with the concept of something like 20%. 15. 15%? Mm -hmm. We went back and forth mm -hmm. on that one. Okay. Um, yeah, we did. <clears throat> pardon me. So they would maintain a percentage of the town manager's salary as their salary, acknowledging that we ask a lot of our volunteers in this town um, and people are often out at meetings three, four, five nights a week. Yeah. Um, and with the first select maintaining that ceremonial um, capacity, and we've also asked something else of the first selectman, which is to take on the role, um, a greater role in economic development. So we, we did those two things. Um, but getting back to the issue of why did I vote against yeah. this form that we actually ended up recommending, um, I, I firmly believe in our form of government in America. I think that we're a democracy, and I don't think anybody would suggest that we hire a, town, a, a country manager to be our president. And I think that, well, there are a number of reasons, but one of them is that you know, the town level is the bedrock of democracy in America. This is where democracy starts. And it certainly may, uh, there may be some advantages to having a professional um, in terms of the education and, and the professional capacity that they may have. But at the same time, when you look at where our elected officials come from, people talk about uh, legislators or elected officials not having the capacity once they get elected to do the job. Well, where do they come from? They start. They start right here. They start in our municipal elections. They start in our state rep elections. Uh, so I think that that's a real vital part of the democratic process, and I wouldn't want to give that up. Um, I wouldn't want to give up the idea that the person running the town is subject to election every two years, uh, subject to a direct vote by the people for the type of job that they're doing. Um, and it also comes back to the type of place that Simsbury is. And I've only lived in Simsbury for four years now. Um, I lived elsewhere in our district in another local town for 10 years, and that had a town manager. And I'm not in any way, shape, or form um, denigrating that town, but I found something very special in Simsbury. And I think that the community that we have here is largely tied to the incredible and vibrant involvement, volunteer involvement, we have at every form of government in Simsbury. And I think Simsbury is a phenomenal place to live, and we've been recognized many, many times as being a phenomenal place to live in America. And I think that what we have here really works. And while some places might have a dearth of qualified talent to fill that role, and maybe in that instance you would want to think about it, but when you think about the people who live in Simsbury and the qualifications of the people who have been first selectmen in the past and who could still be first selectmen in the future, we have a highly educated population to draw from for the first selectman role. And I, I don't think it's something that needs fixing. And I think that by fixing it with the town manager, we lose community involvement, we lose neighborhood feeling. Well, why would you necessarily lose community involvement? I mean, there's certainly, certainly going to be boards sure, and commissions could, to serve you on, you would right? be. But I think that 
Simsbury has a unique level of involvement mm -hmm. in in that type of in that type of capacity. And having lived in a town with a town manager, there just isn't that same level of involvement. And I don't know if it's it's that it foments from the grassroots type of thing and, and therefore everybody gets involved. But I know that what we have in Simsbury works very, very well. So I'd like your reaction to another argument that I've heard. I've watched uh, the public comment at some of these meetings mm -hmm. and the comment has been made, uh, look, do we really want soccer moms yeah. to be running this town? <laughs> <laughs> okay, How do you I think to that? I think that argument does such a disservice to women who have chosen to step out of the workforce for uh, any period of time, who are, have been able to step out of the workforce, who have chosen to work to step out of the workforce. We have our, for our current first selectman has a law degree from Georgetown University. Um, you can't tell me that this woman is not qualified. She's not a soccer mom. Perhaps for a short time, or perhaps for the entire time she was raising her children, she stepped out of the workforce. She is a highly educated, highly qualified woman. Uh, and similarly, similar things can be said about our our other first select women. And so, well, technically, it's first select women, even though they're women. But that's one of the other things We're we voted to change. Right? Language. We're going to gender neutral language in yes. the charter. Uh -huh. that, that's the big one. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that does a grave disservice to women, whether professional working women or women who are staying at home. And I think it really denigrates uh, the actual Simsbury woman. Mm -hmm. I think if you put up the record, I mean, here I'm going to you know, <laughs> charge in and defend women too. I think if you put up the record of the women first selectmen that we've had in the la last couple mm -hmm. of decades uh, against the men first selectmen, they would stand up very, very well. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, so. that's not, this is not Eric's comment. <laughs> right, no, 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 I have heard it. I just, it. you just took it there. <laughs> yeah. hey. Um, Anita, I wanted to ask you um, about the cost of this position. So the average town manager in Connecticut makes something in the neighborhood of $140,000 a year. Um, which is significant. It's, it's almost twice as what we're paying the first selectmen today. So how do you justify that extra cost? What are we going to get for that money? Well, first of all, let me offer the opinion that we're not paying our properly our first selectmen today. Uh, $75,000 is not measuring up to someone who probably has to spend 60 hours a week in the job and has Georgetown Law Degree, I mean, really. So that being said, um, I, I think when you're talking about how much do you pay somebody, of course this is negotiated according to that person's experience and that person's abilities, and uh, you would expect to pay somebody what they are worth in the marketplace, I mean, like you do in, any kind of big corporation. And if the person is worth it, they're worth it. Uh, and in the big picture, when you're talking about, I don't know how many millions of dollars, we have now close to a hundred million dollar uh, overall budget. It's getting up there, it's over 90 something anyway with the education budget thrown in. And, and by the way, uh, it's on the education side that we have the really, really big salaries. It's not on the town side. So they're worth it. Yeah. If they're worth it, they'll get it. What about the cost of, um, of, if it came to it, of, of having to get rid of the town manager? So if you, if you Google uh, town managers, um, one of the uh, uh, risks of the job is they get fired, uh, not infrequently, um, for various reasons. Um, and I know that there are times when it can be a six-figure uh, payout in order to let mm -hmm. them go. Um, does that concern you? Uh, a lot of this can be handled in contract law. You write stuff into the contract about performance and uh, about, uh, I don't know, what all those uh, were occasioned by, if it was some kind of moral perpetuity or whatever. <laughs> I don't know uh, why those people yeah. were fired. Uh, if it was incompetence, uh, that should be in the contract. They should uh, be subject to personnel reviews. And I think though the reality is that, <clears throat> excuse me, while that could be handled by contract, what kind of qualified town manager is going to accept a contract that essentially gives a town an out for hiring them and firing them at, mm -hmm. at whim? Um, so I think that while it is subject to negotiation, the type of quality of town manager we want wouldn't accept that kind of contract. Um, and just to get back to a point you were asking Anita about, about the cost of a town manager's salary being much more than we are paying our first selectmen right now, in addition to what we'd pay a town manager, um, plus any kind of bonus that might be negotiated in there, we're also paying a first selectman a stipend type of, right. so if we're talking 140000 
for a town manager and we're talking 20% of that salary, I'm not that great at math, that's about $28,000. Mm -hmm. So we're really increasing the cost of the town from this form of government. Um, and there may be other ways to protect the town from the type of liability inducing um, aspects of the role of a first selectman without going to a pure town manager. Mm -hmm. and, and we didn't really go to a pure town manager form of government. Um, we, we said we wanted a town, form, town manager form of government, but then in subsequent votes and discussions, we expanded the role of the first selectman again. So I think that's mm -hmm. what the Board of Selectmen is really asking us to look at. Um, yeah, well, in truth, there's not one pure form of first selectman right. and one pure form of town manager, uh -huh. and you pick one or the other. In truth, the kind of uh, organizational chart we could come up with is, you know, we could have thousands yeah. of permutations there's there. There's a whole spectrum of yeah. how this could work. Yeah. And for, for one thing, um, when I came into the job, um, I never thought of myself as a soccer mom, by the way. <laughs> I, was, I had a career as a high school English teacher, so I had a strong education background and a permanent certificate and years of experience. Uh, I also was a, a business owner with my husband. We had a business in industrial metal cutting tools, and I worked in that industry for full time. Uh, so it's not like I came off the soccer field and decided to uh, run a meeting. Uh, you come with life experiences and talents, and you also have another layer of management right under you, and those are the department heads. And if you've got good, solid, experienced department heads, there are a lot of problems that just don't arise. And I think this was, this was the situation when I was the first selectman. Uh, very competent, experienced department heads. And um, that's important that you keep them that you keep them happy and you maintain that more grassroots level of management. You know, Eric, mm -hmm. um, in addition to the town manager form of government isn't the only thing that we talked about and that not the only recommendation that we sent to the Board of Selectmen. Um, there were a number of other recommendations that were made that actually got a lot of attention at, at the last hearing for the Board of Selectmen. I don't know if you're interested in any of those or, or if you want to talk about any of those. Of course, I, of know, I know among those we, um, was the, um, the Culture Commission. Oh. Um, so I guess let's, let's go there. Oh. Um, no, it's a, it's a good segue. Um, so the, the recommendation was to establish a Culture Commission. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to me about, about how this would be structured and sort of what problem this would solve. I don't think you have to look at what problem it would solve. Uh, what it, what uh, benefits could it bring? I don't. I'm not. So it's not in reaction. I was to the one a, who first brought it up yeah. as a as an idea. It was not a reaction to okay. a problem. It was more. Uh, I was thinking about Talk at Mountain yeah. when I was first selectman. We built the the field, the concert lawn. Uh, and decided to give that the permanent home to the HSO. And I've always had a, a wonderful feeling for how much more culture this could bring to town, mm -hmm. that we could really benefit from it in many, many ways and all of our school children and so forth. I think culture and, has grown a lot since yes. it became culture parks. It, it, it just would be better served by having its own board. Own commission, I, I think there's say. a lot of interest in town yeah. in a lot of cultural events. Yeah. Uh, you know, Simsbury Celebrates is huge. There are thousands mm -hmm. of people who turn out for it. And uh, there's a lot of potential there. And what we are interested in in Simsbury is quality of life. And yeah. culture certainly defines that. So we decided that it was... The, the TV show is yeah. not called Culture Parks and Rec. It's called That's Parks right. and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> a great show, by the way. It, it is, is a great show. Um, one of the recommendations that was considered but ultimately was not, um, it was not uh, put in front of the selectmen um, is the idea um, of, how, of changing the way that the um, Board of Education members are selected. Mm -hmm. um, could you first, first give a little bit of background on how they're selected today? Sure. Um, well, there are a lot of different ways that you are legally allowed to constitute your Board of Education. You can have any, the statutes, the state statutes, allow for various numbers of members of the Board of Education. And in Simsbury, we've chosen to adopt a eight member Board of Education. So it's an even, possibility for an even number of, of Board of Education members. And every two years, we go to the ballot and we elect members of the Board of Education. Um, 
turns out that historically in Simsbury, I think it's, we talk about it as maybe a gentleman's agreement. Nobody's quite sure how it started, but for quite some time, uh, it has been tradition that each party, the Republicans and the Democrats, have only been offering two candidates at a time, which means that no matter how many votes one candidate does or does not receive, everybody who is actually on the ballot for the Board of Education will be elected. Yeah. So, um, it's, so it's, it's not actually they're contested. They're technically elected, but they're, they're, they're technically elected, but they're really but appointed it's, by the political parties. Essentially, what happens is that the political parties decide who their nominee will be, yeah. and it's the political parties who are putting these people up, and because they're not putting up three instead of two, it becomes the political party's actual appointment, correct? Yeah. So what role could the Charter Revision Commission have done to have broken that tradition up? Um, well, you know, it wasn't something that was actually specifically in our charter charge. We could have gone there, um, but it was a big, it was a big piece of apple to bite off for something that wasn't actually in our charge. Mm. Um, and we could have decided that instead of having an eight-person board, we would have a nine-person board, which would have meant that one party or the other would have had a majority just by, just by the vote. Um, but we decided that um, that was, A, a larger bite of the apple that we wanted to approach off our specific charge. We could have done it. Um, but another thing that can be done is we all like the fact that there's a possibility for an even 4-4 type of board, um, mm. and it's easily handled by appealing to the parties directly to ask them to put up the number yeah. of candidates. So theoretically, <coughs> there's nothing stopping uh, the Democratic Party from putting up more people in there. Absolutely than not. Yeah. Absolutely not. And in addition to that, there's nothing to stop somebody who is an unaffiliated voter from getting themselves on the ballot and yeah. running. And presto, you have a contested election. Just one unaffiliated voter, and you've got a real, true contested election, even if the Republicans and the Democrats decide to continue to put up two people. <clears throat> but I think that what that did was it really started a conversation in town, because I would say, correct me if you think I'm wrong here, Anita, but I would say that the conversation around the um, constitution of the, not constitution, but the way that it is constituted on the Board of Education, I would say that that was the singularly most well-attended discussion, the most hmm. fervent discussion, the discussion that members of the public really seem to have the most interest in. So I think that it really did start a conversation. I know that both the chairs of the Democratic town committees and the Republican town committees have been approached about this issue, and I would not be at all surprised to see the gentleman's agreement change going forward. Hmm. But it's really not a charter issue. Right. Because they can do it now. They could. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, so what's next for the draft uh, recommendations that you, you put in front of the, uh, the selectmen? What happens next and, and, and ultimately, w will the voters get to vote on something? I hope so. Yeah. Uh, w well, uh, the next thing is going to be a joint meeting between the Charter Revision Commission and the Board of Selectmen on July 11th. Okay. Um, and then... The public invited? Is that a public meeting? Oh, they have to be. Meeting? Oh, okay. oh, absolutely. Public These are all Excellent. public meetings. Yeah? Okay. Totally. This is... This is important. This is big stuff. So the yeah. public should mm -hmm. be there, yes. July 11th. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll see where they want it to go from there. Um, I was curious about the fact that they mentioned virtually every change we made that they want us to look at again. And do they really feel equally interested in every single change? Or are they going to zero in on one or two that we really need to talk about? Uh, in a way, we're up against a little bit of a Time deadline yeah. Yeah. because if they do want to actually vote on, on anything and change anything, of course we should do it in November when people are going to turn out by the thousands at the polls. Yeah. I do think we have an mm -hmm. August deadline in order to have someone get on that. the ballot. Yeah. Okay. So we're in a time crunch. And, and here we are on July 1st already right. today. And so. it's, people have vacations and we're mm -hmm. trying to, to get people together and get a quorum uh, because we can't do anything without a quorum. And yeah. if summer vacations fall the wrong way, we, we could be in a a serious time bind on that. Mm -hmm. So, okay. We just have a, a, a couple minutes left, and I wanted to make sure each of you uh, got the last word. So, I wanted to, um, you know, how should how should voters be thinking about this thing, the, the whole town manager idea? Well, I, I think that voters should be number one thinking. Um, we had minimal attendance from the public at at these hearings, and 
the form of our town government is a really big deal. Um, and I think that perhaps people haven't paid a lot of attention to it because Simsbury rolls along doing so well that people feel comfortable and confident uh, that it will continue that way. But this is a pretty momentous step. Do you want to go from a form of government where your vote matters directly every two years, where you as a voter can change how our government goes? Or do you want to cede that power to, um, to somebody who's under contract? And do you mm -hmm. want to take a step away from democracy? And I think that's an important question for us all to ask ourselves and to be willing to answer. So that's what I think the public should be thinking about. Okay. Anita? I was not the only first selectman who uh, that's true. That's right. <laughs> rang in on this issue. Uh, Mary Glassman was also on the Charter Revision Commission, also voted yeah. for town manager. And Peggy Shanks came to one of our uh, public, hear public audiences or public hearings, I'm not sure, which and expressed an interest in town manager form of government. We both know how highly technical uh, some of it can be, especially when you come to union negotiations and contract, any kind of contracts and uh, land purchases and so forth, uh, there's a great deal of detail that has to be followed. At the same time, there is a great deal of interface with, as customer service representative <laughs> to every voter in the town of Simsbury. And that kind of thing needs to remain. That's why I voted for having some kind of a stipend for the remaining first selectmen. There would be some kind of an office in town hall where people could meet that person. Yeah. And, and then that we continue that close connection. So uh, it's not exactly a closing argument against my attorney <laughs> friend here. But <laughs> Well, great. Uh, mm -hmm. Anita Mueller, uh, uh, Melissa Osborne, thank you both so much for being mm -hmm. here. Really appreciate thank it. You, thank you, Eric. And you're watching Simsbury Happenings. If you want to weigh in on today's conversation, please do so. You can email us at simsburyhappenings at gmail.com. And I'll be reading your comments on the next show. We'll uh, see you again next month. It's Simsbury Happenings, and happy summer, everybody. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.